What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we are taking a look at Dynamic Zoom in DaVinci Resolve and how it can really enhance your footage. So I've got this static shot, uh, camera's not moving, of downtown Nashville. And all that is really moving is the train moving across here in the distance and you can kind of see a little traffic here in the background going across this bridge. And this is where dynamic zoom can really become really useful and helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do is if you go over to the inspector on the right hand side you see dynamic zoom. And if you turn this on you'll notice that it changes the, the framing of the shot. And if you press play it's added this zoom motion uh, to your clip. Or, or picture whatever uh, kind of media you're using and you can change which way it does this uh, it's a really useful effect you don't have to set any keyframes or anything like that um, if you come over here to this little square uh, this is usually on transform which is not selected right now but if you come down here dy dynamic zoom and select that you will see these boxes here and you'll see they're kind of shrunk down and that's because I've got this set to half resolution in my proxy mode so if I go over here to playback, proxy mode, I'll need to set this to off to get this effect uh, to rescale back to full resolution. Um, and here it may not play back as smooth if I'm you know, using a laptop like I am that's not that powerful. But what I can do is just go ahead and set where I want it to zoom in or out of. And this green square and this red square are where you tell the program you want to start and end the zoom. The starting point being the green square and the ending point being the red square. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in instead of zooming out because that's what it's set to do by default. So I'm just going to move this outwards and then I'll take the red one and move this in a little bit and take the green one and move it all the way to the outside where the red one was. Now over time it should give us a little zoom in. And if I go back to proxy mode half resolution. If I go here and click off of that dynamic zoom then I can simply take a look here and we have a nice little slow zoom in. And of course you could go back to that dynamic zoom and set this, let me fix my proxy mode, and you could set this to not just zoom in or zoom out but to zoom left or right. So I could take this uh, green square here and make it about the size of the red square and just move it over to the right and then take the red square right here click on it and then move it over to the left and kind of center it up and right now how I have it set is it's slightly zoomed out and it'll zoom in and to the left so now if I reset let me get this zoomed down a little bit more place this there and then go back to the proxy mode half resolution and unselect dynamic zoom then I can play back and now we have just this subtle little motion going across the footage which is just really nice if you're just throwing this into a clip to kind of establish a shot where you are um, this is a really quick and easy way to do that and you can also come here to the dynamic zoom options in the inspector and set this to ease in ease out or ease in and out if uh, for some reason you want this to start off still and kind of ease in to the motion to the left or right or in or out so now I'll jump into the project of our boxer and show you how I would and would not use the dynamic zoom so in this edit I have a couple different shots that are kind of just still shots the camera is slightly moving but uh, we could add a little motion to them just to you know add some flair it's this shot in the beginning and then this shot right here I would like to add a little zoom in and then this kind of very still shot of her in the distance boxing and so I'll go to this first shot and I'll simply go over here to dynamic zoom in the inspector and mark that on and then click on our dynamic zoom button to the bottom left hand corner of our preview window and if that's not selected again just go to the drop down menu and select that and make sure our proxy mode is where we want it and then I'll rescale the starting point which is the green one to the outside and rescale our out point 
a little to the inside. And I'm going to move this one up too because uh, this ending one. Because as we can see when we play this back, I want to zoom in on this motion that she's doing. It's all about her putting this glove on. So I'm going to start as far back as I can. And then I'll scale in. And I'll go back to our proxy mode. And now we have a very subtle zoom in on our hand. And if I turn the dynamic zoom off, we can just take a look at the shot. And then if I turn this back on, It's a subtle difference, but to me, it draws you in, especially with it being the very first shot uh, of this video. All right, so let's come down here. And in this shot, uh, I, I don't want the entire shot to zoom. I kind of just want to make a quick zoom in the middle um, because in the final edit, I kind of had uh, this whoosh motion with it push in. I'll show you. So that's what I would like to do with this shot. And the dynamic zoom, as you can see here, does not have keyframe uh, parameters. Uh, so that would not work well if I wanted to um, just zoom this in in the middle. Plus, I want this to go about halfway, zoom in, and then stay in that zoomed in position. So I'm just going to do this by keyframing. So I'll go into this clip a little ways and then make a keyframe in the zoom and the position of the inspector. And then go forward a little ways and then make another position zoom keyframe and then with the zoom I'll just push this up a little bit and then position I will push this up just to keep her face uh, kind of this focal point of this shot and now we should be able to see that right off the bat nice uh, but I would like to speed these up so if I zoom in and hit this keyframe button on the bottom right, ha right hand side of this clip. Uh, we'll get a drop down menu here and I can just change these keyframes by moving this one over to the left a little bit. Shorten that up and now yeah that's definitely more dramatic. Very nice and I'll scoot this one back and, and shorten this one up a little more. Yeah not quite that short. Boom. And another thing we can do is hit this uh, spline drop down window, uh, which allows us to really see what our keyframes are doing. And let me get some more space here. And now we can see how the lines are, are kind of behaving with the keyframes. And we can also select uh, all of these lines and then hit the easing button to ease this line. I don't know if you can see that difference, but now it's got a slight bend at the beginning and a slight bend at the end. Kind of giving us a slight push and not such a jolt. Um, so that's just a really simple thing. And of course you can come in here and zoom even more and make really fine details on each uh, keyframe if need be. Yes, that's good. And come through here and just make sure that everything is actually set. This one, we can see the bend here. Um, and we can see the bend. Uh, and sometimes it's good to just come in here and double check. And this one, I'm not positive. So, yep, it's already set. And it looks good. So that is a situation where I would totally not use um, the dynamic zoom. It's just It just looks better, really, when you want to make something kind of custom and cool like that, just to go in and make those keyframes. And it's still pretty simple. Uh, not quite as fast, of course, or convenient, but very simple in the long run. It doesn't take you much time, especially when you get kind of used to uh, making those keyframes. So I'll go ahead and collapse these two little uh, menus there and then jump down here to our last shot where <clears throat> I will go down here to the inspector, make sure this clip is selected, hit dynamic zoom, and I'll shorten this back up. Hit our dynamic zoom button, turn off our proxy mode, and I will reset this because I want this to zoom out or zoom in also. Um, 
I'm not, uh, this makes it look like I'm totally partial to zoom ins, which I also love a good freaking pullback. Oh, there's nothing like just a beautiful shot and an amazing camera pullback. Nothing like it, but in this instance, I feel like uh, that the push in is a little more compelling. Um, all right, so now if I hit off, you should be able to see this push in. Yeah, that is nice. And just a little thing like that makes a huge difference. Um, I love dynamic zoom. I love that little implementation because uh, it's so easy just to throw that in to any clip that's kind of static and not doing much and all of a sudden have a nice little pan to the right, especially for product shots. If you're the kind of person that does product shots and you just have you know your camera set up on a tripod and you have the product set up with all the lighting, um, you know, you can make sure just to get a nice, good, clean shot with it in focus. And then in the in post, you can go in and put it at dynamic zoom from left to right or a slow push in. I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it was informative and I hope you guys have fun using these tips and creating dope stuff. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave them below in the comment section. And don't forget to like this video. Uh, and as always, subscribe. I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace!